always want to see me attempt to pour a traditional champagne fountain, you might want to stay tuned. It was an attempt. So happy new year. I'm so happy to be celebrating with you. And obviously I have to cake a champagne bottle. I put my diamonds on, I put my tutu on. It just gets caught in my Crocs. Like, and they match so well. They do not. <laughs> I've baked four four inch round cakes. I'm going to remove them from their pan. The next thing I wanna do is level all four of these little cakes and remove the caramelization from the bottom. No caramelization, just pretty pink cake. Now I can layer each cake into two layers for a total of eight layers of cake. Sir Squeeze is, I feel like he feels intimidated because it's time for him to help me simple syrup these cakes. But the truth is he knows like, He's a simple syrup bottle, he's not a champagne bottle. You know what I mean? I wanna add a little extra moisture to this cake. And by that I mean champagne. I actually didn't use champagne. Champagne is the most expensive. I use Prosecco. And I'm going to brush it onto each layer of cake with my silicone brush. If I boiled it into the syrup, all of the alcohol would have evaporated. So you lose a lot of that flavor of champagne. And then I thought back to when I did movie night cake and I put root beer into the simple syrup and I remember flipping the bottle over it and it was just like psh, psh, because it's so fizzy. Fizzy syrup. Oh, no. <laughs> so yes, I'm gonna dab it on from a champagne glass. The question is what do you do with leftover Prosecco with cake crumbs in it? What do you do? You take a sip. They were pretty pink cake crumbs. <laughs> now that the layers are prepared, I'm going to use a three and a quarter inch circle cutter to cut each layer to that size. This takes care of the caramelization around the sides. So now I'm going to fill and stack these cakes with Italian meringue buttercream. I just think the gorgeous like white buttercream is gonna look so pretty with these light pink cakes but I do need to fill and stack them in three piles. Since there's eight layers, two cakes are gonna have three layers with two layers of buttercream, and one cake will have two layers of cake with one layer of buttercream, okay? Don't try and build it up all at once, don't do it. While my cakes are chilling, I'm gonna take the time to cut some foam boards to the exact size of my cake. So basically I wanna cut three boards that are three and a quarter inches. Once your cakes are chilled and the buttercream is set, it's time to assemble them as one. So the first thing you want is a round board, then you're gonna spread some royal icing on the top. It's just the firmest choice of icing because it dries solid. We're gonna put one of our three layer cakes on top of that board. At this point, you're gonna wanna add four dowels, kinda like a cross, north, south, east, west, and then you can take another board, spread royal icing on the bottom, place it on top of that cake, spread royal icing on top, add the other three layer cake. And you wanna repeat what you just did. The next thing I need to do is run one long sharpened dowel through the whole cake down the center. And when I do this, it's so secure that I could pick this cake up from the dowel. This is how you ensure that your cake won't wobble back and forth. Oh, I gotta mention something to you guys. It only comes into the video at this point, but in reality, you will wanna make the neck of your champagne bottle ahead of time. I actually have one. I can show them one. Oh boy. <laughs> so this is what it looks like, and I'm gonna tell you how to do that right now. I always make more than one. That's, I actually have two of these extra just in case. You're gonna roll out your gum paste uh, about an eighth of an inch thick, and what you wanna do is wrap it around the top of the bottle. Before you do that, make sure to grease the bottle with vegetable shortening, because it's very important that the gum paste can be removed. Very important, <laughs> pivotal. Once it's wrapped around the bottle, you're going to cut a clean seam through the gum paste and remove the excess. You can try it two different ways. This one, I only cut one seam, but it's very hard to get off the bottle and you might crack and break it. So what you should do is cut another seam right across from the natural seam. 
This way you'll end up with two shells of the neck of a bottle and it will definitely be easier to remove. The great thing about gum paste is it dries much, much, much firmer than fondant. But if it's too soft, it won't even hold its shape. So I'd say like a minimum of two days before you want to make the neck bottle. Bottle. Bottle neck. <laughs> yes. The bottleneck. No, neck, I guess. Neck yeah, bottle? The, the, the neck of your bottle. Yes. This. Now it's time to carve my bottle. So I want to have a real bottle next to the cake so I can make sure everything will line up okay. As it turns out, I kind of regretted making the top board, like the board underneath the two layer cake, as wide as I did, because I do think I'll have to carve away some cake there. So I pulled the cake apart, trimmed down that board, and put it back together. And then I used a small serrated knife to start to carve that just that curve of the bottle. Once I was happy with the shape, of course, it's time to crumb coat and chill. Now that my crumb coat is set, I'm going to ice this cake. I'm definitely going to use a bench scraper to help me get it nice and smooth. And up at the top, where it curves, I'm going to use my invention, which is just a square piece of acetate that I didn't invent. In case this is your first episode, welcome! And Happy New Year! Are you always going to look like this, Yo? Yes, I always wear diamonds, a tutu, and Crocs to cake. This is how to cake it. It is time to add the bottleneck <laughs> to the cake. I did need to scrape away some Italian meringue buttercream. That is fine. Do what you have to do so that the neck fits. Once you know your neck is going to fit, the first thing I want to do is soften some white fondant, roll it up into like a thick cord, and press it into the bottleneck. But I do want to leave about at least a half an inch at the top of the bottleneck for the cork later on. Then I'm gonna fill the other half of the shell, same way. Make sure to cut the fondant flush to the shell. Just be very careful the way you handle this. The next thing I'm gonna do is use a cell stick, which is just a type of sculpting tool, to just indent that fondant in the center because I have to keep in mind there's a dowel in the cake. So I wanna just make way for it. Now I'm going to apply some royal icing to one half of the shell on the surface not the surface, the inner surface, the fondant, and then I'm gonna take both shells and glue them together on top of the cake around the dowel. You're gonna really feel this makes it nice and secure. It makes it feel like it's a solid piece rather than a hollow shell. So I'm just icing on some royal icing over both seams. See, it's technically seam hiding, but I'm not doing it to hide the seam because we will cover this. I'm doing it to glue the two shells together. Now let's put our cake in the fridge to chill, and then we can get to fondant. I guess it's new year, not new me. <laughs> so I have some soft pink fondant. In fact, I dyed it the same color as the cake inside this cake. And now I'm gonna roll it out nice and thin and use my I don't know how to describe it, but the rolling pin has a texture that's like a grid pattern. Uh, so I'm gonna roll this over my light pink fondant once it's rolled out. And then I'm gonna very carefully pick that fondant up and wrap it around the bottle, making sure it's tall enough to go from the base of the cake up to the neck. So my inspiration for my champagne bottle is actually this beautiful bottle of champagne. It was like this limited edition and it was this beautiful textured soft pink. Stunning. The tricky thing about texturing fondant and then putting it on a cake is you never want to sort of smooth it or rub it hard enough that you're erasing the texture. So you have to be very gentle and I did press very hard on my rolling pin to make sure to really imprint the fondant. As usual, when I wrap it around, I cut a clean seam, remove the excess fondant, and then I cut away the excess at the bottom of the bottle and up at the neck. The next thing I want to do is place a real cork, or at least part of a real champagne cork, into the top of the neck. And at the end of the day, nobody's really going to eat the top portion of this bottle because it's entirely gum paste and fondant, unless of course their name is Connie. This time around, I'm going to use a real champagne cork and I'm just going to trim it and then I'm going to insert it into the top of the bottle because it is so light and it's the perfect shape. 
Now I'm going to roll out some pink gum paste. It's a slightly different shade than the fondant because I want to mimic the foil, the pink foil at the top of a champagne bottle. The reason I'm using gum paste is I need this to be so, so thin. I'm going to roll it as thin as possible on a non-stick board with a non-stick small fondant rolling pin. Once my gum paste is rolled nice and thin, I am going to use the same textured rolling pin to texture it. And then I'm going to pretend that it's foil, brush the neck of the bottle with some clear piping gel, drape this gum paste over, and I'm going to go with the flow. Uh, because the foil naturally creases and folds over itself, so I'm going to allow the gum paste to do that as I smooth it onto the bottle. So I smooth the gum paste down onto the neck of the bottle and I let it overlap. And once I'm happy, I trim it flush where it meets the fondant. And then I also, I went an extra step because I couldn't resist. It was looking a little thick. Obviously, it's not as thin as foil. So anywhere that it overlapped, I sort of carefully peeled it back and cut away the extra gum paste underneath, ripped it off and folded it back. Just in an effort to keep my bottle neck, you know, more of a real size. It's time to make this look like foil. So I'm mixing together some pink luster. I had a different, couple different shades. I mixed them together. I put some white in there with clear food grade alcohol and paint. Carefully paint all of the foil. You don't want your paint to run down onto the pink textured fondant. I also need to add the word moe. Is it moe or moe? I think it's moe. We just listened to a lot of rap, Jocelyn. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Moe, right? I don't know. Often, sometimes just referred to as Mo yes. in the 90s, but we're not gonna do that here. The bottle says Moe, that's what I'm writing. <laughs> so, from rolling out some black gum paste nice and thin, and I have some tappets, I'm gonna cut out the letters M-O-E-T. I do have to adjust them, make tiny little cuts, just to make it look more like the font, and then I used a star plunger cutter to cut out a star. I'm gonna now glue on these letters and the star onto the foil of my bottle. And then with a little bit of gold paint, I'm gonna hand paint a shadow on each letter and the star. There's one problem with this bottle. It has no label. We have to let the people know that this is champagne. It's Moe, Rosé. I'm going to roll out some pink gum paste really thin, as thin as I can get it, and then I'm going to cut out a square for my label. I found a label online, I printed it, I cut it out, I used that to measure my square. Gum paste is awesome, it dries fast, so usually it's excellent for writing on. Normally when I want to write on gum paste, I let it dry completely, but if I let this dry completely, I won't be able to wrap it around the bottle because the bottle is curved. So instead, I have to write on it when it's fresh. So I'm going to write out Moe and Chandon. I'm probably not saying that right. Now it's time for the, the sash or the scarf. I think it's a sash. That sounds fancier. For the sash, I'm gonna roll out some black gum paste, nice and thin, and then I'm gonna cut two bends and make sure that the ends of those bends are cut on a slight angle, just like they are on the bottle. Now I need to wrap these bands around my cake. I will glue them on with a little bit of clear piping gel. And although it appears like it's one band that just sort of wraps around the bottle like a scarf, because of the shape of the bottle, it doesn't work out without you getting a lot of gathering. So it makes more sense to wrap one side around and then the other side around and cut a clean seam at the back. The black band also has some gold stripes that are very thin and there's no way I'm going to attempt to freehand paint those on. So what I'm going to do is take my leftover pink gum paste, I'm going to add in a little bit of yellow gum paste to make it more yellow basically and then I'm going to roll it out really nice and thin and use my strip cutter to cut thin strips. Two of the stripes on the bottle are even thinner than my strip cutter so now I'm going to attempt to cut one stripe in half. So now I have two extra thin strips. It's time to paint all of these strips gold. Now I need to add these strips to the black bands that are on my bottle. 
this is gonna make me nervous. I'm going to paint on a very thin line of piping gel onto my black bands and then line up the strips just as they are on the bottom. I also need to create the sort of gold seal. I've rolled out the same gum paste, I used a circle cutter, and now I'm just gonna use a round piping tip to sort of go around the edge of the circle and indent it a bit. And now I wanna paint this piece gold. And I'm going to draw on a crown with a black food coloring marker. It is hard to draw on top of luster paint. It's like the marker is just making an indent. If you, if you wait a little longer, the second time around, you will be able to get sort of that black food coloring on top. Just be patient. I also wanted to add just a black band under the label. That's usually where a lot of details about the champagne are written. I'm not gonna write all that, it's far too small. But I, I do think a touch of black will help the label stand out a bit more. Now, before I pop this bottle or this cake, I just wanna remind you about a special event I have going on for my subscription members. From now until January 15th, five of my subscription members will receive a golden ticket in the mail. Yes, the actual mail, like in the mailbox. That golden ticket will get you exclusive access to a private live stream with me. All of our Cake Tea Club, Sprinkle Service, or Deluxe members are eligible to win a golden ticket. Keep a careful eye on your mailbox, and if you're interested in our subscription services, click the link below. The label is on, the bottle is chilled. I think it's time to pop this bottle or pop this cake. I just wanna remind you to please subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell. We wanna keep making videos in 2020 every single week and we need your support. Let's let the celebrations begin. So here's an important note if you're gonna build your own. Make sure your floor and your table are level.